Now, as you'll be aware, the referendum in Ireland returned a vote to repeal or relax the rules on abortion. And voters overwhelmingly decided to amend the Eighth, sorry, to repeal the Eighth Amendment, which only permits terminations when a woman's life is at risk. In Dublin, people gathered to celebrate, and this is what some had to say. We've been working so hard for women's rights for so many years now, and we can see it's finally coming true. Ireland has finally grown up face to fact. Don't shift it abroad. Do you want to hear safely? Me, for my daughters and my grandchildren. More than 66% voted in favour and even Nottingham played a small role with the University Students' Union in Nottingham offering bursaries to Irish students so they could travel home to vote regardless of which way they intended to vote. Well, the government's planning to enact a new abortion law by the end of the year. The proposed legislation would allow abortions during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy and up to the 24th week in certain circumstances. The Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, said the result marked an historic day for Ireland. I think what we've seen today really is a culmination of a quiet revolution that's been taking place in Ireland for the past uh, 10 or 20 years. Uh, The people have said that we want a modern constitution for a modern country, uh, that we trust women and we respect them to make the right decisions and the right choices about their own health care. Well, anti-abortion groups have called the referendum result a tragedy of historic proportions. Liam Gibson is from the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child. Good morning, Liam. Good morning. Were you expecting a vote quite as strong as this? Uh, certainly, this runs completely contrary to everything that we had, uh, all the feedback that we were getting um, on the ground. So it, it, it actually comes as a bit of a shock. Um, but um, certainly, it doesn't. It's the the vote itself. It doesn't change uh, the fact that every human life has uh, has a value, and human beings have an inherent right to life, which uh, governments and states can recognise, but they cannot dismiss. Mm. What do you think? Why, why do you think people voted in the way they did? Because sixty-six percent of voters obviously don't share your view on that. Uh, clearly, uh, I, I um, I'm sure there's there's uh, lots of different reasons why individuals uh, voted the way they did. That there is certainly been accusations of misinformation uh, regarding what the the what is actually allowed under the Eighth Amendment. And there, there were um, stories spread by groups such as Amnesty International that women were dying in Ireland because of the Eighth Amendment. Women were being sent to prison because uh, they had had an abortion unlawfully. Both of those two things are, are untrue. The Irish uh, maternal health care is actually better than the, the UK's. Uh, mm. it, is, it is true though isn't it that, that many young women and older women in Ireland have travelled abroad so it is a fact that women are having to go to extreme lengths to get terminations do you think the fact that it happens has been just a reality check for those voting the number of women travelling from uh, from Ireland uh, to Britain for abortions since 2001 whenever it was um, 6,673 uh, 6, it's, it's, it's been cut in half uh, it, over the last 15 years so th- there's not an increasing demand for abortion if anything the, the demand for abortion has actually decreased that's uh, due in part to better provision for women who are in crisis pregnancies and also better understanding of the, the humanity of the unborn child and actually what abortion does to women themselves, which is uh, something that's, uh, you know, after 50 years of abortion in Britain, we know exactly what abortion does, both mentally and physically, to, to women. You know, so that that's a... Uh, that's something that really does need to be well, brought out much more. Both fine, well, finally, uh, this, this, the, the law now has, uh, will be changed, presumably, in line with the referendum. Will you campaign still, or is this over now? It, it, we've been campaigning. Uh, the Society for Election of Unborn Children is the oldest pro-life group in the world. Uh, we were founded in 1966 to fight the David Steele's Abortion Act. We haven't we haven't gone away, and we're not going to go away in Ireland either, because simply because 
uh, we've lost this referendum. This is a, a very tragic uh, situation. The, the Irish people, in full knowledge of what abortion does to children, to women, and to a society like Britain, have decided uh, in cold blood to make this value judgment on children who are considered to be imperfect. Well, I think they've made the decision in in the interest of the women who uh, feel that a pregnancy would wreck their own life as much as, 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 as you say, the unborn child. But we have run out of time. Liam Gibson, I've got to say goodbye to you because it's news time here on BBC Radio Nottingham. But I do appreciate your time. Liam's from the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child.